guys, Tarek Maryface here. Before we actually start the episode, let's start by having a moment of respectful silence because that incident you just watched actually resulted in several fatalities. So here it goes. Right, let's get on with the episode. So here's a situation that occurred. This was 2011. A Beechcraft Queen Air took off from an airport in the Philippines. There were three people on board at the time. When the aircraft took off, the left engine failed on the initial climb. The pilot didn't have time to declare an emergency. Grout witnesses, on the other hand, were able to hear the engine failing, and you can watch that in the video. You can hear it on the video, should I say. Soon after that, air traffic control instructed the pilot to make a left turn. The pilot did so, but he used a very steep bank angle, and not only that, he did it very slow airspeed, and worst of all, he did it into the left engine, which was into the dead side engine, which is something you never do in aviation. The aircraft unfortunately spun and crashed into the ground. The three occupants died, along with 10 other people on the ground. Several others were injured during the accident, and about 20 houses were partially or completely destroyed. Now, the accident report cited three main things for why the accident occurred. The first one, I think we can all agree, unfortunately, was pilot proficiency in emergency procedures. What we actually understand is that the prop wash of a multi-engine aircraft actually aids the lift process on the wings. So when one of the engines fails, not only does a propeller cause a lot of drag, but it also means that the lift on that side of the aircraft is less. So that one wing has more lift than the other. Not only that, but when you make a turn, the lower wing has less lift than the upper wing. That's why we say we never turn into the dead engine because the lower wing being the wing with the failed engine will have a massively insignificant amount of lift compared to the upper engine. And that can cause a very precarious situation such as a spin, which is exactly what happened in this case. Proper training can help us prevent making these kind of mistakes. And the fact that the pilot made that mistake suggests that he wasn't properly trained. Another factor that was cited by the report is the fact that the aircraft was poorly maintained, meaning that the aircraft's engine failing shouldn't even have occurred to begin with. In fact, investigators found several illegal welding marks on the engine, suggesting that the aircraft had gone through several unauthorized and unreported maintenance schedules. What it means that when we choose an FBO, we have to make sure that their maintenance is up to date and legal. The report mentions one final factor, and that is that the air traffic control instructed the aircraft to turn left on takeoff. Now, asking an aircraft to turn earlier in the traffic pattern at that airfield is quite common. It's done to help traffic flow. However, the report cites that at the time there was no need for the aircraft to turn so early. What I'd like to say is that it's not really ATC's fault because they didn't know the aircraft was in danger. After all, they never declared an emergency. One thing I think that really counts that the report did not mention is the poor CRM, that is cockpit resource management. The pilot forgot the three basics in aviation. This is something they teach you on almost the very first day. Aviate, navigate, then communicate. Aviate means flying the aircraft. Navigate means getting where you want to go to. And communicate means talking to ATC. But it also means following ATC's instructions. The pilot was so eager to follow ATC's instructions that he forgot how to fly the airplane. Or rather, he forgot to fly the airplane. The better action in this case would have been to level off the aircraft, feather the propeller, and then go through the emergency procedures required by the particular aircraft. Of course, it's easier to say this now in re retrospective, but that's why training is so important. We have to remember that ATC are not our god masters. They're there to help us, and they are a hugely helpful resource. However, if we can't do something for the name of safety, we shouldn't try to do it anyway. ATC are on the ground. They're not in the cockpit with us. They don't know what's going on. It's okay and even required not to follow ATC's instructions in the name of safety when it's necessary. Being a pilot in command actually gives you a huge amount of power and authority. The captain of a Cessna 152 has the same amount of authority as a captain of an Airbus A380. That's my time, guys. If you have anything to say about this, please tell so in the comment below. Maybe something I missed out, maybe something that I got wrong. I'd really like to hear from you. I'm Tarek Maryface. I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.